It's been a few weeks since I've been in here and uh, it's time to attack the shower. So I put plastic up a while ago as a kind of vapor barrier and now we're going to put a uh, Wonderboard concrete backer, tile backer, and then uh, some red guard and then tile. Okay, so I'm fitting the first piece of Wonderboard in. It should be about this dimension. Um, I marked with pencil where all the studs are going to be so that when I put it in, I'll be able to uh, drill directly into the studs and get it nice and secure. So I'm using a rubber mallet to kind of ease it into position. All right, so the first piece of Wonder Board is in place. It just needs to be screwed in uh, using these special screws that are specifically for Wonder Board. They look like that. Okay, so the first board's in. Uh, it was a little bit overextended on the bottom, so I had to score the bottom and kind of break off a little bit. So it's a little bit crunchy down there, but it's all going to be covered by tile, so it shouldn't be a problem. And uh, the rest of it is anchored to studs in there, and it feels solid. So moving on to the next one, which will probably be this guy over here. It's going to cover this wall. This piece is a little bit too wide, so I gotta uh, score a half an inch off the edge, and then you basically just crack it. I haven't done it before, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so I scored the edge. Now, as far as I know, you're just supposed to break it off. I might need some. Okay, so we've got two walls in now. This one was cut uh, along that edge and it's kind of rough. And you can see that there are some gaps, but I'm going to be putting in some caulking and uh, these corners are gonna be covered in uh, some mesh tape that you then put the red guard over so they will still be waterproof. This is gonna be the ceiling piece. Um, so I've got my waterproof light that's going to go in the top here. I'm just sticking my uh, pliers in there and widening the hole slowly. It makes for a pretty good circle, but it's not very neat. And then, there you go. Looks like it fits. i got to push it in a little more. but Yeah, and then this one I'm going to have to cut in place because I'm worried that I'm not actually going to be able to hit the vent or like find the vent um, just by measuring and placing everything in. So there we go for now. So where I left off a few days ago was with the ceiling curve. Uh, unfortunately, I, I need to put in some furring strips in order to attach it to the ceiling because when I tried to put it directly into the ribs of the bus, it just was not holding was not working so I need more anchor points and anchor points that are a little easier to get into so I'm going to be using these pieces of half inch plywood to make some furring strips okay the furring strips are up and I'm ready for the piece of flexible wonder board to go in place so I'm going to do that now well, first I'm going to put up a little bit of adhesive and then the board okay so I got the roof piece in, or the ceiling piece in. Um, it's kind of ugly, but it's all going to be covered up with 
mortar and tile, hopefully. We'll see. Um, it's solid. It has a nice curve to it. Feels good. I think it'll be a good base for, for tile. Um, up here, it's a little bit flexible. I don't know how much that's going to affect it, but uh, we'll see. If it's no good, then I can use like a strip of vinyl or something to to cover it one more time and that'll also be waterproof. This guy is wired in and I just need to heat shrink the wires, push them all back up in there and cinch this guy down and he should be good to go. Okay, so I need to make a template up here. Um, I'm pretty much done with my old template because uh, I've cut most of the curves of the roof that I need. I'm putting the template up in this area roughly into the curve. It's got some rough edges, but I'm going to take a pen with a perfect circle and a hole right in the middle of it. I'm going to trace basically like that along the top, and that should give me an exact curve that I need to cut. So I'm basically just improving my template using this scribe. All right, the template's pretty good. So now I need to use it to cut the backer board piece to go there. All right, so I've got the corner pieces in. Uh, they fit really well. I put some spacers in the back here just so that there was a little bit more to anchor into because uh, otherwise they were just a little bit loose and it's weird having a corner like that sticking out loose. I don't think it would last. So kind of gone in here and punched the walls to see how solid everything is. It feels really solid. I think this is going to be a good foundation for the tile. Okay, so the basic shape of the shower is in here. I've got my light. I've got my fan uh, with the temporary ring in place. So everything is cut to size. Everything is in place. I just need to seal up all of these edges with red guard and uh, special tape that came that I got with the red guard. It's basically like sticky grid stuff so that uh, the red guard has something to adhere to. Um, put it on every one of these seams. I got a wet rag to kind of wet down all the seams to help it adhere a little bit better. And uh, then it will be time to do some waterproofing. All right, change of plans. This is not adhering as advertised. So I'm going to be using Red Guard to kind of hold it together since that's what I'm going to be using anyway over it. Uh, so I think the plan is now to paint the inside with Red Guard. I'm going to put down a piece of plastic so that we don't have any of it dripping onto the, the drain pan. And then I will put the tape in the seams and then more Red Guard over that. Blue tape all around the edges plastic on the bottom. This is our prep work. Alright, so this is Red Guard. Uh, this has been sitting in my basement for a while. I might give it a little bit of a mix, but it's got a consistency that's a little bit thicker than paint. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to kind of use it to fill in some voids, some cracks, some places where the screw holes uh, are a little bit deeper. So. We'll see how this goes. This is my first time using it. So, as you can see, the red guard is in. Over here, it's a little wet, so it's a little bit lighter than over here, where it's already dried. This is just one coat. Um, I went in and put all the the mesh tape into the corners and cracks and any of the seams, but there's still a lot of space in there. Uh, it's gonna need another coat, um, which I'll get to soon. Um, this is it for today, so I'm just going to leave this and let it be. Um, 
let everything kind of dry. Okay, we're here. It's another day. Um, as you can see, all of the uh, Red Guard has dried and it is red now, but it's just one coat. It's going to need another coat. Um, I posted my last, uh, I posted an Instagram story about doing the shower back when I, the, the first day I did it, and I got some really good suggestions about what to do about the cracks. Um, so I got some construction adhesive, Sika, Sika Pro construction sealant is what I'm using. Um, two different people told me that was what I should be using. So I'm going through fixing all these cracks. I'm going to seal it up real nice. Then I'm going to put the tape over it. Then I'm going to use the red guard on top of that. So the sealant is in. Uh, I'm pretty confident that it's going to be watertight. But even so, I'm going to use that black mesh tape. I'm going to go over all the sealant again. And then um, I think I'm going to do it now while it's wet. So it just kind of seals in or it, it kind of, it's kind of held in by the sealant. And then um, red guard over everything. Okay, so it's been about five or six days since I put the construction uh, filler adhesive into the cracks here. Uh, the mesh is kind of absorbed into it. I kind of pushed it in. And now it's time for the second coat of Red Guard. All right, second coat is in. There's a little bit of uh, the sealant that you can see through the, the one layer that is over the sealant. I'll probably do one more coat over all the edges and then it'll be ready for tile. Today is tile day. Uh, the shower's all prepped, waterproofed, ready to go. We just need to put on some thin set and set, figure out how we want to set the tiles. So we're looking at two different configurations. We've got triangular tiles. Um, so that either like kind of ratchet together or link up together on this edge or they are flush along a straight edge And so we're figuring out the best way to do this So we're mixing our thin set we got a little bit of water in a clean bucket I'm going to dump some of this into the clean bucket and then put some mix some water in doing like half a bag. I'm gonna add some water. I've never done this before so I don't know exactly how much you need for the consistency. It says five quarts for that whole bag. I'm kinda gonna mix it up and just see what we can come up with. Looking pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. It looks creamy. It's kind of dripping a little bit, but it's not runny. I'm gonna wait a little bit for it to kind of set up, like five minutes or so. And then we'll take it out to the bus and start troweling it on. So we had to thin out the thin set a little bit more than it was because it was just a little too thick, but we think we've got this down now. Julian's been putting in some sheets. It's looking pretty good. It's coming together real nice. All right, so we've got the all the walls done. We're just finishing up working on the ceiling, making sure that everything is pressed into the ceiling really well so that it doesn't fall. And it's looking good so far.
finished installing this shower a few days ago, uh, all the tile and everything, but it uh, hasn't been grouted. I went through with a tool, this tool, and found any spot that was too thick where the, or where the thin set had kind of pressed through and had to scrape it away. It was very tedious. But now I've got my grout all mixed up and we're going to start pushing the grout into the shower. Um, it's a pewter, so it's, it's a lot darker than the thin set. So it should hopefully create a much uh, deeper contrast than what you see here. So let's do it. Okay, so we've put the grout in. We've let it dry for five or, or for two hours. We wiped down everything with a sponge to try to get all the haze off the tile. Um, and for the most part, it's it's off. But we're going to be using some cheesecloth to kind of wipe it down and hopefully get off the rest of the haze. And then we just let it cure for three days before we seal it. Right, so yesterday we finished the grout. I let it dry for a bit and then I came back with uh, some matching colored silicone and put it into the crack up here all the way down. Same on the other side. It's a little bit more flexible. Uh, cracks tend to be get a lot of stress, so this should prevent it from breaking apart on the seams. This is the shower mixer. And I ended up buying the wrong thing and ended up having to order the right thing online, which is this. Uh, and so basically what you do is, this is a Kohler uh, right temp thing. And I don't think they actually make this mixer anymore, but you have to get a Kohler shower trim in order for this to work. So. There are two screw holes in the mixer itself that line up with this plate. And then I've got this little screw on thing that's going to be important later. So I am just lining up the screw holes and screwing the screws in according to the instructions. I'm doing it real tight. There's this gasket that's actually got some sticky stuff on it. And just kind of like cinching it in there so it sits nice and snug and watertight it's the back so I don't need to use any caulk which is really cool and for everything that I've seen this should be pretty simple so so far so good okay so this handle has a square a uh, bit inside so I have a square adapter that came with the thing and it's got a star shape on the inside that fits right over the, uh, the hose or the, uh, the spigot thing. I put the, the final piece on the outside place this in This is perfectly vertical. Okay. So, if I did this right, I should feel some resistance as I push it this way and it stops. So I know that it's hooked up right. And that's it. If the shower was running, I'd be spraying myself in the face right now with hot water. I'm not. Because it's not. Okay. So with the shower squared away, it's time to square away the lights and the fan. So I've got a uh, shower trim. Did a bad job of cutting out this little piece that's needed because it's set at an angle. Um, but I'm going to silicone both of them into place. Alright, so I've siliconed in the trim on this one. 
the light has been siliconed in, but it's kind of not holding too well. So I've got this tape trying to hold it in a little bit more firmly. Um, I'm going to let it sit for a day and then I'll come back and put the, the trim on the light. It's like a little chrome ring. Looks like that. Okay, so I attached some trim pieces to the outside of where the shower meets the wall. Julian painted it. I'm just going to let these adhere and then I'm probably going to add even more silicone uh, sealant that's probably clear on the inside. But it looks really good. It's getting more finished each day. And we also got this guy going. All right, so the shower is all finished. Uh, we finished it a while ago. Uh, Unfortunately, the water's not on, so I can't show you it in uh, operation just yet, but I wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like. We have the trim out. I'm going to put a curtain rod up here, a little soap dispenser thing over here, but that's basically it. And as you can see, it kind of got a hunch down a little bit, but I think it looks pretty.